I get a lot of questions about the Honda hybrids. Not as much as the Toyota hybrids, but in any case, we've got a lot of learning to do in this video, so let's go. I've been excited to show you this compilation of time-lapse footage I made that'll show you not only how the hybrid system works over time for a better understanding of what to expect, but also some footage from some of my favorite stretches of Northern Ontario's winding two- and four-lane highways and back roads along the way. The 2023 Honda Accord is powered by the very latest fourth generation of Honda's two-motor hybrid system, which has an all-new 2.0-liter four-cylinder Atkinson cycle engine developed with refinement as a key goal. The 2.0-liter gas engine is hooked up to the larger of a pair of electric motors that live in the Accord Hybrid's transmission. They're mounted above one another, and this configuration makes the power unit lighter and smaller and more compact. Here's the new two-motor hybrid system being built in-house at Honda's transmission plant in Ohio. Watch closely as workers build the transmission and you'll see the setup. There's room for the larger traction motor which makes 181 horsepower on its own and spins it up to 14,500 RPM, as well as the smaller motor called the generator motor which spins at 17,000 RPM and makes 161 horsepower. It's dedicated to recharging the hybrid battery pack as you drive around, and according to Honda, these two motors work independently of one another. And here's a closer look at the system in action thanks to a video animation from Honda where you can see the two motors responding differently to different driving situations, which I'll be demonstrating in a lot of detail for you from the driver's seat in a moment. Combine a gas engine with an electric motor, or motors in this case, and you have a hybrid. Literally two things combined into one. In a hybrid engine, those two things represent the power sources a tank full of gas, and a battery full of self-generated electricity. So this all works to boost the performance of the gas engine without using any extra gas, or even to take over completely and drive the car solely on stored electricity where we're just using battery power. So you can think of the hybrid system in this car as sort of an electric turbocharger that makes its own electricity, and you'd be in the right ballpark. So these are the various displays that drivers can call up to monitor the Accord's hybrid system. As you watch this sped up footage, notice a few things. The EV light in the lower left comes on when the gas engine turns off. That shows we're not using any gasoline. When the EV light is on, you'll notice the engine icon is dimmed as well, indicating that the engine is off. So the engine can be on, or the EV light can be on, but not both. You'll often see this during periods where the speed of the vehicle is decreasing, whether by coasting or braking. Here you have wheels that are spinning but not being powered, so those spinning wheels drive the motor instead of vice versa, and the motor becomes a generator, driven by the wheels, that makes electricity for the battery. That's why, in my footage, you'll typically notice the instrumentation turn green on the downhill segments of the field cutoff highway. When you're rolling down a hill off the throttle, you're generating electricity every time. On the power meter gauge, whenever it dips down into that green charge zone, that's what it's showing you, along with the green lines on the infographic. Later, that electricity is used to help drive the car, either in EV mode or in sync with the gas engine, where the electric boost from the motor lightens up the workload to save fuel, while also smoothing out the performance and fattening up the torque curve. That's the blue lines. They mean power is moving from the battery to the motors and therefore the wheels. You'll see those blue lines whenever the battery is driving the car or helping drive the car, and also when the engine is running to recharge the battery if regenerative braking is insufficient. Given the time you've now had with this time-lapse footage, you may have also noticed the hybrid battery pack meter. It's referenced both in the central screen infographic and this digital meter on the left of the instrument cluster. Keep your eye on that battery meter and you might notice something. It never gets full and it never gets empty. As you drive around, it's in a constant state of being recharged by the engine and brakes, and then discharged as it helps electrically boost or even entirely drive the car along. You might switch automatically between charging and discharging dozens of times a minute. It is a continual process that happens constantly and invisibly as you drive around, and there's no driver decision making required. You just put gas in the tank and drive, and there's nothing to plug in, since all the power this type of hybrid needs is automatically created on board as you just drive around. And if that was the most efficient and informative explanation you've ever seen of how a hybrid works, please drop me a like in the comments section on YouTube. By the way, Honda says this hybrid system uses the gasoline engine for three distinct purposes. To power the generator to supply electricity for the drive motor, to flow torque directly to the front wheels to move the vehicle, and to charge the battery pack. The drive motor produces maximum torque starting at zero RPM, providing quick starts and energetic responses in city traffic. 
Honda says the generator motor only acts as a motor to start the engine. It becomes a powerful generator the rest of the time. Honda also says the Accord Hybrid's battery can be recharged in two different ways. One is regenerative braking as we discussed, another is when the engine is running and spins the generator to recharge the battery. By the way, the battery pack and all major components are packaged beneath the rear seat to maximize cargo space. So 5 foot 10, 200 pound guy here in my comfortable seated driving position. Plenty of knee room, that's the first thing that strikes me. In terms of headroom, just about four fingers width here uh, above my head between the top of my hat and that sunroof. Nothing feels cramped or crowded. Couple things to draw your attention to first. Much more conventional layout in this cabin, largely uh, what you're used to. Triple dial climate control system here, very easy to work with your gloves on. These tactile buttons here uh, for quick access to those functions as well. Conventional gear shifter, nothing particularly fancy or special about this, just a standard gear shifter like that. Easy to use tactile controls here uh, for your drive mode, hybrid selection, parking brake and so on. Easy to feel your way around these with just uh, your fingertips. And also we've got a wireless charging pad uh, down here for our smartphone as well as two additional USB-C ports here and here just above. And one thing I want to draw your attention to is actually the size of the opening here. When we pop this trunk, which means you could actually load some heavy and awkward stuff straight in and out almost. No motorized tailgate or trunk in this case, absolutely fine, you don't need it. That's nice and light action there, spring assisted. And opening it, same thing, it's a little touch. Spring loaded action, it's gonna get that right up and out of your way. So math lesson time, how much gas will this hybrid system save you and is it worth the extra cost? The Accord Hybrid has a 2 liter hybrid engine with 204 horsepower and 247 pounds of torque. That's 12 horsepower and more importantly 55 pounds more torque than the standard non-hybrid 1.5 liter turbo in other versions of this car. So despite being more powerful, the hybrid engine drinks 2 liters less gas than the standard turbo engine for every 100 kilometers you drive. In the non-hybrid, you'll tend to use 7.3 liters of gas for every 100 kilometers you drive, and in the hybrid, you'll tend to use 5.3 liters of gas to cover that same distance. And for my American viewers, that's going to be 44 miles per gallon in the Accord and 48 miles per gallon in the Accord Hybrid. So back in Canada, assuming you pay $1.54 a liter of gas and drive 25,000 kilometers per year, then the Accord's hybrid engine will tend to use about $750 per year less than the non-hybrid engine, or about $62 a month. The Accord starts at $37,000 Canadian dollars with the turbo engine and $41,000 Canadian dollars with the hybrid engine. That's a $4,000 step up in price, making it about five years before the hybrid engine covers its added cost with fuel savings. Again, assuming you drive 25,000 kilometers per year and pay $1.54 a liter of gas. So it is highly feasible that the cost of the hybrid more than pays for itself during the life of the vehicle, and you're enjoying smoother, quieter, and more powerful performance every step of the way.